Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is part five, but I think this is the final part okay, for the topic damages. And insyaAllah it's going to be the final um, recorded lecture for the semester or for the whole syllabus actually. Okay, this is the final one. So in the earlier part, previous part, we covered about measure of damages as well as a proof of damage proof of damages. So for this part, we're going to look at the nominal damages. Okay, what's the meaning and uh, how it is being applied. So nominal damages, it refers to when no, situation where no actual damage has been suffered. So the court will allow these nominal damages uh, to, to recognize okay, the rights uh, of the, um, the, the plaintiff. Okay? So plaintiff seeking substantial damages must prove both the facts and amount of damages that we discussed earlier. Okay, before the court will allow him to recover such damages. Otherwise, okay, his action may fail and he may be awarded only nominal damages provided the defendant is proved to have breached the contract. So meaning that here, nominal damages is um, relevant, okay, will be given to all cases of breach. Okay, it may be awarded in all cases of breach of contract provided plaintiff can prove breach on the part of the Defendant. So yes, the court will give him nominal damages to recognize that yes, his right has been, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the other party has breached uh, the promise, okay, has uh, break, broken the, uh, the contract. So again, I coming back to the same case, we discussed the case uh, when we discussed about um, the measure of damages and proof of, of damage. Now we are, we are discussing it under nominal damages. The case is Popular Industries Limited and Eastern Garment Manufacturing limited and the court reiterate the rule and principle here the normal cost the normal way the normal rule of proving market value in the case of resale of goods okay, in bulk would be to call the customer so this is what the court said to call the customers or at the least if the customer cannot be called at the least uh, if the parties agree to documentary proof tender documents whatever documents audited account or whatever showing the existence of and dealing with such customers to show to the court, to prove to the court, yes, there exists such customer in which the, 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 the goods are being uh, resold to. And then, okay, and then in all circumstances, having examined all the facts here, the court said reason and justice point to the inevitable conclusion. So we must conclude this way, that although the plaintiff had shown the facts of damage, yes, but there's no evidence okay, or no sufficient evidence has been adduced so as so as so to its amount with the perhaps unfortunate result that it is virtually impossible to assess the images. So we cannot assess. The court said we cannot assess because there's no documentary evidence, there's no eyewitness to support the argument or contention allegation here. So because of that, yes, we agree the contract has been breached. So we allow you nominal damages. The court made an award of nominal damages of five hundred dollars in U.S. currency. That being the currency of the contract. Actually, the actual claim was seven hundred thousand plus, I think. Okay, uh, but then eventually they only get, uh, they only got five hundred dollars in US current in USD because they cannot prove the evidence. Okay, how to calculate, how to assess the images? We have another case, um, local case, also local case, uh, reported in MLG nineteen ninety nine, Mars Enterprise and Metro Parking Malaysia Sembarhat. We focus on the issue of damages. Uh, you can read the facts in your textbook or even in the actual report. Uh, on the issue of damages, the plaintiff has failed to prove damages because again, uh, there's no sufficient evidence which was standard before the court. Because, and the court said, well, actually, this is what you can do. Plaintiff could have collected and retained documents or the registration numbers of the cars that it had serviced. But in this case, no. There's no such thing. Okay? It wasn't it wasn't tendered in the court. The plaintiff had failed to produce any timesheets, any account books or other documents okay, to show the amounts that they actually receive. And then this is very important part of the judgment. Uh, the court said, rough estimation call for guesswork. So we don't want rough estimation, we want the actual uh, losses that you have suffered. A court should not be put in an invidious in, in, in position in a very hard position, okay? uh, difficult position of having as if plucking a figure from the air. No basis, no evidence, no proof. So in the absence of actual documentary evidence, the court can make a reasonable evaluation of the loss incurred. Okay? At least sufficient or satisfactory evidence must be led. There must be evidence. Okay? 
to enable the court to make a fair and reasonable assumption of loss. As far as the case was concerned, the evidence standard in this case was totally inadequate. So it's like plucking a figure from the air in which the court won't allow uh, any claim, okay, the claim, such claim from the plaintiff. Okay, the last part of our topic is uh, mitigation. Okay, duty, duty to mitigate losses or uh, mitigation of damages is applicable to tax law, also applicable to contract law here. So this is the, the duty imposed on the plaintiff who suffer losses. Okay, so what's the duty on the plaintiff to take all reasonable steps to mitigate the loss, to minimize it, okay, cost by breach. So what he has to do, to do his best to not to increase the amount of damage done. And then, because why? The court won't allow recovery uh, for any part of the loss which defendant can prove to have resulted from failure on the part of plaintiff to mitigate. So, in other words, plaintiff must minimize the loss resulting from the breach. Yes, we uh, we agreed there was a breach, but on the plaintiff part, must make whatever reasonable effort to minimize the loss okay, by taking all reasonable steps available to him. And what if he fails to do so? He cannot recover anything in respect of that extra loss that is supposed to minimize it. Again, coming back to our case, Datuk Muhammad Anwar Abid Embong, remember the, uh, the, the court said, well, this case actually fall under both first and second limb. But as far as mitigation of losses was concerned, okay, Datuk Muhammad Anwar actually was awarded 3 million, okay, 400,000 plus, okay, but then he cannot get the full amount. The court found that the appellants had failed to mitigate their losses after the breach had occurred. Yes, there was a breach on the part of the bank. But then, on the part of Dato, okay, Dato Muhammad Anwar, he has to do whatever necessary in order to mitigate. They did not make any attempts okay, to raise the required sum, even though the property was valued at 4 million. And they had with them okay, the title, the physical titles, okay, uh, as well as the lots, uh, the land. Okay? So, because of that, failure to mitigate here, the appellants, Datuk Muhammad Anwar Abid Ambong, will only be entitled to 50% of the loss of profit claim. So, the court cut off 50%. Cannot get the full claim. We have another case, um, also on mitigation, Sam Securities and Anthony Lee Sin Choi. I think it involves sale and purchase of certain shares here. Okay? So, and the court said, plaintiff uh, must take all reasonable steps uh, to mitigate the loss to him, consequent upon the defendant's wrong. Yes, there was breach on the part of the defendant. So plaintiff cannot recover damages for any such loss which he could thus have avoided. But plaintiff himself has failed through unreasonable action or inaction. So in other words, plaintiff cannot recover for avoidable loss. He should have avoided the loss. He, he actually um, uh, was in a position to avoid the loss but he just sit there doing nothing and then ask for the um, claim from the defendant later. And as far as the case was concerned, the duty of the defendant to mitigate the the duty of the plaintiff to mitigate the defendant's loss. That is to say, how to do it? The duty to sell the shares at a reasonably opportune time. Okay, whenever the time is right, so please sell it off. Taking into consideration the volatile price movement of the stock market. So whenever the time is right, then must sell it off to minimize the loss. So as to minimize the defendant's loss here. Okay, let's read through explanation to section 74. It talks about mitigation. So you have the, the main provision, you have the illustration, but in between you have explanation. This is a short one. In estimating the loss or damage arising from a breach of contract, the means which call, which assisted okay, of remedying the inconvenience caused by the non-performance of the contract must be taken into account. So you cannot see the word mitigation there, but the essence of it, okay, the meaning is that it's on the part of plaintiff to mitigate basically. The last part, okay, the final part is damages for loss of reputation and credibility. Usually, it falls under tax law, but sometimes you can also claim it under contract law. So, where a servant is wrongfully dismissed from his employment, very specific situation. The damages for dismissal cannot include compensation for the manner or the dismissal or for his injured feelings. Because usually, um, sometimes you can claim under defamation, you can provide all the elements of proof, that one under tax law. Okay, that's the case. CCA Holdings and Limited and Farm Resort Berhad 1998. So plaintiff were engaged as managers okay, to manage the defendant's club for initial period of 10 years. Okay, they have this agreement. TA, TA, Technical Assistance and manage, Managerial TA, MA. Okay, uh, that's the agreement. Technical Assistance and Managerial Agreement. And they signed um, in 1993. And then in this agreement, Clause 7, it says that 
uh, if the defendant cannot uh, make profit, he cannot generate operating profit uh, after two years after, okay, May 1995. So the owners could terminate the agreement by giving a month's notice to the appellant. So yes, we can terminate your um, your service, okay, if you cannot get um, uh, sufficient operate, uh, profit, lah, basically. And later, yes, there's no profit. I mean, it doesn't reach the um, the estimation or expectation here. The finance first one to disclose, okay, clause seven is now give notice to the plaintiff to um to to end, okay, the employment uh, contract here, the service. The defendants contended that damages for loss of reputation or credibility could not be awarded for breach of contract. And then our issues here is that okay. Whether damages for loss of goodwill and reputation could be claimed for breach of contract because now they are claiming as part of their losses under breach of contract. And the court said under common law, the court referred to common law because uh, in Contracts Act, I think uh, there's no specific section on this. So the court uh, referred to common law. The court said under common law, the courts have denied the granting of damages for loss of credibility and reputation. But the court allow only in respect of three exceptions okay, for the rule. So there is very, it's very very specific exception here. So the case must must be proved to fall in uh, within any of the three exceptions here. The first one, action against a banker for refusing to pay a customer's check where he has in his hand funds of customer to meet it. So it's between banker and customer. Another one, uh, where there is a mismanagement of the advertising of the plaintiff business. So it's about advertise advertisement. Another one, the third one, where the wrongful dismissal of an act or literary figure causes him to loss of future publicity because uh, their um, I mean their income is very very much related to publicity okay they, it's like they, they are called uh, they, they this I mean this they, they, they are in the in those industry okay, in which uh, publicity will determine their pay whatsoever okay so the court said well in our instance case here plaintiff were not bankers okay for, for subscription and neither were the actors nor those in the literary field, so also not under second and not under third exception. And their basic business and duty was not to attract, attract publicity for themselves. Okay? It's for the club, okay? because they are the club manager. So they were engaged to operate the club efficiently and profitably. But they were, and they were not there to sell themselves. It's like not what actor or artist or um, literary figures done. Okay? And thus, they did not fall within any of the three assumptions. So because of that, consequently, their claim for loss of goodwill and reputation could not be recovered for breach of contract. So they have to, uh, they have to make it under some other claims, uh, but not under breach of contract. You can also read the case, I think it's in your textbook. The case of Bumputra Commerce Bank Berhad and Top A Plastics from Berhad, it involves a uh, Ganeshi order. Okay, what is Ganeshi order? Uh, a court order, okay, a court order instructing a Ganeshi, Ganeshi is a bank, okay, that funds help uh, on behalf of a data, the judgment data should not be released until directed by the court. So it involves this order, so you can read on your own. The last part, okay, last of last. Exemplary damages, uh, actually this is under tax law, but also it is allowed under contract law, okay. But basically, more or less is similar to tax law that you have learned, okay, only awarded in this specific uh, substance, okay. The first one, whenever it involves oppressive, arbitrary, or un unconstitutional action by servant of government. The, the second one is like refresher here. Okay? Defendant's conduct has been calculated by him to make a profit for himself that may well exceed the compensation payable to the plaintiff. And the third one, where the conscious wrongdo uh, wrongdoing of the defendant is inconcumulious, okay? arrogant, or rude, lah, disregard of the plaintiff. Right? And this is from the case of Choi Chin Wan and Elias Chua Wen. Chua Cheng Wan and Land Development Specialist in Berhad. So, eh? Okay, only one slide here. Okay, second defendant sold the, uh, this is about sale and purchase, sold the apartment, the apartment claimed by the plaintiff to a third party, okay, while the trial was ongoing. So, it's, it's, it's not supposed to be sold because the trial is still ongoing. So, because of that, his act, it deprived the plaintiff of obtaining remedy of specific performance. So, he cannot get the apartment lah, if he want the case, okay? So for this arrogant and contemptuous action, the judge awarded the plaintiff exemplary damages. Okay, this is actually under breach of contract, lah, basically, or uh, yeah, for sale and purchase. So also the court allowed uh, exemplary damages. Okay, the, court, the judge awarded the plaintiff exemplary damages against second defendant, and the sum later to be assessed by senior assistant registrar, SAR. Okay, with that, okay, 
we are done with all the whole topics okay for um, our syllabus law one to one one law of contract two right from the very beginning but for the current lecture we started with a uh, fraud okay but for the face to face lecture earlier on we have covered um we started with caution and then we uh, we uh, and then we proceed with under influence and then uh, misrepresentation and then fraud okay, starting from fraud until the final topic here we covered it uh, through a zoom recorded lecture let me stop share first okay so thanks for listening so i hope you all have managed to view all the recorded lectures so all the best Okay, with that, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.